In this video, we're going to talk about another important property of fluids called surface tension. So surface tension is one of those things that's kind of abstract to think about, but we see it, examples of it every day. And it has to do with phenomena that take place at the interface between either two different fluids or a fluid and a surface. And so a typical situation that we can think about is a liquid and a gas. So for example, water and air. And a crude way to think about it is that thermodynamically it's more favorable for water molecules to be in contact with and surrounded by other water molecules than it is for them to be in contact with air molecules. So as a result of that, uh, when these two fluids are in contact, uh, the water molecules will tend to assume a shape that minimizes the interfacial surface area that's in contact with the air. And that kind of shape is a sphere. So for example, that explains why uh, water assumes a spherical droplet shape uh, in air. Now you can also get similar effects between a fluid and a surface. So for example, uh, you know, water on your car after you wax it tends to bead up or form also these droplet shapes. And that's because again, uh, the properties of the surface are such that the water molecules prefer to be in contact with other water molecules than to be in contact with the surface. So they again assume the spherical shape that minimizes the contact area with the surface. So that would be an example of a hydrophobic surface. Uh, another, uh, I guess the other extreme would be a case where you had a coating that uh, made uh, the water want to spread out over the surface. And so in this case, uh, you know, the surface properties would be such that it was favorable, more favorable for the water molecules to be in contact with the surface than it was for them to be in contact with other water molecules. This is an example of a hydrophilic surface. And uh, so a lot of anti-fog coatings are examples of, uh, of surfaces that would have this hydrophilic property. But all these examples relate to the same concept. Uh, their origin is with surface tension. And so surface tension we define in terms of the work associated with increasing, uh, changing, but generally increasing the interfacial contact area between two fluids. So it's helpful, at least initially, to think about it in terms of uh, the units of these quantities. So we're talking about energy associated with uh, a change in surface area. So energy has units of joules or newton meters. Uh, area has units of meters squared. So when we cancel out one of these meters, we get um, that this idea, uh, surface tension, she would intuitively have units of newtons per meter. And so we surface tension is defined in terms of a parameter uh, gamma that has units of force per length or newtons per meter. So surface tension is a fluid property just like viscosity or, or density. Now um, also the, the surface tension parameter is, pos is a positive quantity uh, because we talk about uh, by convention work associated with increasing surface area. So it's a positive work associated to expand uh, the contact area at the interface between two fluids. Okay, so one thing I want to point out is sort of uh, based on the scaling argument. So surface tension depends on the area because it represents, again, a work associated with a change in the surface area. But let's compare that to a different kind of force, like a gravity force. Uh, so gravity is a body force, and so that, uh, you know, uh, mass times gravity uh, is the weight of an object, and this depends on its volume, right? So body forces depend on the volume uh, of, of, uh, of an object. So if we compare the magnitudes of these two forces, like the ratio of the surface tension force, F gamma, to a gravitational body force, Fg, their dependence on length, right? The surface tension force depends on area, length squared. The body force depends on volume, length cubed. So the ratio of these forces scales as 1 over the length. So that's a Im very important uh, observation. So what, and we can see that by looking at the implications in two limits. So for large sized objects at large length scales, the gravity force is much larger than the surface tension force. Because if L is large, this quantity is small. Right? So gravity is much larger than the surface tension force at large length scales. As we get to smaller length scales, very small length scales, in the opposite limit, 
the opposite is true. Right now, if L is small, 1 over L is large, so surface tension is much more important than gravity. So surface tension forces, uh, sometimes they're also referred to as capillary forces, become important at very small length scales. They're not so important at large length scales, but uh, they come into play and they can be actually very large uh, at very small length scales.